success, see, I pretty much stayed within it and just changed a few little things and made it my own. Uh, here's another example of an ebook. So this was the template, and I took that template, put my words in it, I changed the font, put my own picture in it, and now I have an ebook cover. Really fast. I mean, you can do these in like 10, 15 minutes. So compare that. You know, there's nothing wrong with hiring people. I'm all game for hiring professionals, absolutely. But when you want to do things kind of quickly, you're working ideas out, you know, you might put your ebook out, or you might be doing this for a client, and then they're changing the title and all that. So Canva's really, really nice to work with, and you can find that at canva.com. So they have um, ebook covers, flyers, all different kinds of layouts that you can use. So I love Canva. Here are some other online image creators and editors. I Picky, Pixlr, Be Funky, Photor, Pick Monkey. Um, I Picky is good for resizing images if you don't have Photoshop. So how many people don't have Photoshop? Yeah, there's a few. So there's these are other tools you can use. All right, so I'm up to number six of my seven tips to give you today, and this one is speeding up your images with a content delivery network. Now, I talked about making your site load faster by reducing it in terms of size so it wasn't so heavy. This is one more thing you can do, and this is at the hosting level, right? So it's sort of a, a step outside of WordPress. And the way a CDN works is if this is where your hosting company server is, and you've got people all over the globe looking at your site, the idea is for your hosting company to be, have these edge servers, sort of these other computers around the world, so that and here I've got a close-up. So let's say your hosting company's on the East Coast, but you've got someone in Europe looking at your site. Without a CDN, it's going to take a lot longer for them to to get your, to your site. With a CDN, then if the hosting company has this edge server, now it's gonna run faster. So this is kind of that little thing to do after you've sort of done everything else to make your site run faster. And so the benefits of using a CDN is faster loading time, Google likes fast sites. Uh, better user experience, people aren't frustrated. I mean, how many of you have gone to a site and you've seen like something load really slowly? <laughs> and it's extra security in case one server goes down. Now that's kind of a little techy behind the scenes, but it does help you out. Here are some resources for you for a CDN. Uh, Cloudflare, they have a free and paid version. I've used Cloudflare and Jetpack Photon. If you use the Jetpack plugin and you have Photon enabled, what Jetpack does is it stores all your images on their server and so it loads them up faster. So you can do it with Jetpack. Mac CDN, Key CDN, and Amazon CloudFront. This is more for developers, I've heard. I have not used these, but my research, these are good ones to go with. And again, you'll get the slides at the end. But Cloudflare, when I turned that on, my site definitely went faster. So you wanna, wanna think about that. Okay, and then sort of winding up here, I have some more image plugins and other handy tools for you, and then I'll, then I'll take questions. Image gallery plugins. Now some themes come with image galleries sort of built in. And there's a default WordPress image gallery, which I've never used because I've not found it very useful. But Foo Gallery is a really nice one. It's easy to use, has really good documentation. Um, I know Matt Cromwell, who spoke this morning, he was involved in this project and really nice galleries for your pictures. Here's another fun one called Draw Attention. 
And they have a free and a paid version. Oh, and Foo Gallery is also free. And the way this works, and, and this is a plugin that wouldn't apply to everybody. But if you have a site where you want to draw the outlines of a shape, right? So it's great for blueprints. And when the visitor visits and mouses over, this shape, each shape kind of highlights. So they mouse over the A, so you want you know, that floor plan, or B, you want that floor plan. It can either click to take you to a page, or the plugin can have something pop up with more information. So this is really handy if you want to have an image on your site and you want to draw, you draw the outlines, you tell the plugin, if they click in this region, then do something. It's a really cool plugin. It's called Draw Attention. You can just go to the wordpress.org and you can find that one. Uh, now my other two tips are for browser extensions. So these browser extensions are your friend. And this one is Colorzilla. I use this all the time. And the way this works is once you install it on your browser, so on Chrome, Firefox, I think it also works on Safari, you get this little eyedropper. And then when you go to a site, either your site or somebody else's site, you click on that, and the eyedropper comes up and it will tell you exactly what color it is. Wow. So this is really amazing. So if I'm going to make a graphic and I found this image from stock photography or my own, I will pick a color off of it and then use it in the image. So people's eyes like to see, you know, colors complementing. And also it's like, gee, what's a gold? How can I come up with a gold? You just mouse over it. And then see, it gives you the color in the hex and the RGB and the hue saturation and value. So it is really, really handy. And it could be, maybe you go to somebody else's site. Maybe you're like, I'm going to build a site and I don't know what colors to use. Hey, this other site's doing a good job with colors. Let's see what colors they're using. And there's you know, nothing wrong with being inspired by other sites. Um, you're just looking for color. So I use it for my own site, and then I use it for others. Or maybe a designer made you a logo, and you don't know what the color was the designer used. You don't want to bother calling them. You can just use this and find out uh, what the color is. Uh, and then my last one is Page Ruler. This is a browser extension. It is free. And once you add it to your browser, then you click on this little ruler and you can click and drag and find out the sizes of anything on your site. So maybe you want to measure, if you have a sidebar, you want to measure how big that is to know how big your images should be. Or you want to measure the height of something or what was the size of this um, logo. You turn it on, you get this grid, you click and drag, and it will give you the dimensions. So this is another really, really handy thing. All right, so let me give you my recap of what I talked about today. Number one, finding images with rights from your stock photo sites, making sure you have the correct rights and that you know, either you have to give credit or not give credit. Um, sizing your images for dimensions and then heaviness, how heavy it is. So you size it to the right dimension, then compress it so it's as light as possible. Organizing your images in your media library so you can find the stuff later. Number four was leveraging the featured image for social sharing and for your site, how it shows up on your site. Number five was create professional graphics with Canva.com. Definitely later this weekend, go open a Canva.com account. Speeding up your images with a CDN, a content delivery network, and using WordPress plugins and some of these other tools. Check them out, see if they'll work for you. And always, always have fun. <laughs> be like this little girl, be playful. You know, images really unleash creativity. They draw people in and they just make your site, everybody says wow when they go to your site. 
Uh, my name is Christina Hills. You can find me on Twitter at Christina Hills. Email me, Christina at WebsiteCreationWorkshop.com. And I know I gave a lot of resources. I will have the presentation available at WebsiteCreationWorkshop.com forward slash WCSD WordCamp San Diego 2018. And I am ready to take any questions. Um, I don't think I mentioned anything about uh, image cloud integration and Google Photos and all that. A lot of images I like cross, especially on cloud these days. Do you have any recommendations for getting it on the cloud to the site very easily? Rather than having to download it, upload it? I only download it and upload it, and here's why. So the question was what if you have your images in the cloud, like Google Images, right? and you want to get them into your WordPress site. Did I have an easy way to do an integration? And the answer is no, because I've done things like that before, and not realizing that my, because you can't, all right, let me back up. You can, when you're putting an image in, instead of put it in from the media library, you can give the full URL. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? So I've done that before. I'm like, well, I own this site and I own this site. I'm just going to be lazy and I'm not going to bring it in because it's over on this other site. So I'll just give the full URL. And then years go by and I decide to take that site down. Or you decide to remove it from Google Photos because you didn't realize you were using it. So that's why if I'm using it on my site, I pull it into the media library because I've had it happen more than once that I deleted a site and now my images were gone. Uh, I'm more talking along the lines of you still want to have it in the media library, you want to have it on your site server, but just facilitating that point A to point B, getting right. it from your, your cloud to your server. So that's a so he says just how could we facilitate getting it from the cloud to your server? There might be a plugin, just like the Pixabay plugin and the Unsplash plugin, they actually pull it into your media library. So maybe there's a Google Photos. Plugin. I, I haven't looked for that, but that's possible that exists. Okay, anybody else? So as you're going through, you keep emphasizing uploading images within WordPress. What about the things that you use over and over and over again that aren't just on one specific page like a logo or the same block of content in or something like that? Do you actually create a separate file folder within all of your media that it's like these are the go-to things I use over and over again? Or are you actually uploading it each time within each thing? I'm not uploading it each time. So in my site, if I use the logo 10 times in the mm -hmm. site, I'm only uploading it once. Mm -hmm. So it's only once in the media library. Does that, does that answer your question? So for one website, mm -hmm. like WebsiteCreationWorkshop.com, I have my media library and I have a photo of me. Mm -hmm. I also have ChristinaHills.com. That same photo I'll upload into that other site. But if I use my picture multiple times within a website, I'm not uploading it again and again and again. Now, when I show you all those logos, they were actually different versions of the logo in one of my slides. They weren't the same logo or my client accidentally was doing it too many times. Okay. So you don't want multiples of the same thing. Yeah, you don't want multiples of the same thing. Okay, any, any other questions? Okay, that's it.